The next curve I want to show you is the quadratrix. If you, the way the quadratrix is defined is there's two lines. There's a line going down, this horizontal line, and there's another line rotating, like, a, like the second hand of a clock. And they're both going at a constant speed in such a way that they hit the bottom at the same moment. That is called a quadratrix. And with it, I'm able to trisect angles and square circles. So the most important point on the quadratrix is this final point, point J. The problem with point J, and, oh, and the, what's important about point J is that it turns out that it's always equal to 2 times the side of the, the, the radius of this quarter circle divided by pi. Now, that's great, and that would having a line segment that has pi as part of its definition allows you to square the circle. The problem is, that J point, see, I know what it is, I know what it is, but when I get to the very bottom, that's the most important point, but it's also the point that I can't get to because at that point, these, um, these things are, are, are on top of each other like that. So that's unfortunate, but still, theoretically, it's interesting. Um, here's a little modernized proof why that AJ is, is that length. To trisect an angle with a quadratrix is actually very easy. All you have to do is put, just stick a quadratrix in this spot. Here's my angle. Get the intersection of the quadratrix with the side of the angle. Drop down this perpendicular. Trisecting a line segment is possible, so I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to make a parallel line and find where that intersects the quadratrix. And if I do that all properly, this angle will be exactly one third of the original. It has to do with, so the line here is always proportional to the angle. Squaring a circle with the quadratrix is much more involved. Here's the circle, here's the square that has the same, uh, same area. Let's see how, how this picture was created. So imagine I just have a circle and I stick a quadratrix on it. And we have this property that the AJ is two times the, the radius uh, over pi. So once I have that, I can draw a line segment. This little length, a uh, little triangle here, this, is, this small side is half the length of that AJ. This other side is the, um, is the size of the radius. And I draw another radius and I make a parallel line. And when I do that, these two triangles are similar, and this base ends up being pi times uh, the radius. If I fill this in, I have a rectangle whose area is pi r squared. And then just like before, I can square this rectangle, and that's how you can square a circle if you have a quadratrix. Another curve I like to teach is called the conchoid of Nicomedes. It has a very easy definition. All you do is you have a line called the directrix and a point called the pole, and you have points on the directrix. Oops. And you draw a line through, through the pole and through that point. And once you hit that point, you continue this other distance, which is called just distance. When you do that, you get this interesting curve that has an asymptote, and it's called the conchoid of Nicomedes. If you go from this point in the other direction on the line, you actually get Oh, sorry. You get uh, you get this. So you get this cool-looking loop. And if you mess around with with where the pole is in relation to the stuff, you get different-looking quadrat quadrat uh, conchoids. That is. Uh, the equation is easily done in polar form, but it's difficult to get it in. Um, it's difficult to do it in rectangular form. So here's my angle here. A is the fixed distance. B is the distance between the, the perpendicular distance between the directrix and the pole, um, th these two parallel lines, or just the distance between the pole and the directrix, shortest distance. So this line segment is A plus whatever this hypotenuse is. That hypotenuse is B over sine theta. The conchoid is useful for trisecting an angle. And here is, here's Y. Oops. Here I have a triangle with a 63-degree 60, uh, angle, and I have this horizontal line. If I move it, whoops, if I move this point on it, I end up with this EDB line. 
And that angle, it turns out, that angle ends up being exactly a third of the original angle when, oops, that's longer than I thought. Hopefully I made this so I could do this. Yes, I did. If E is placed so that when you connect E to B, ED is exactly double BC, this will trisect the angle. And it has a very clever proof. I draw on this line. There's a rule that the hypotenuse drawn to a uh, <coughs> uh, medium drawn to the hypotenuse is half the length of the hypotenuse. So that makes these these two things equal. We also have this angle ABD is equal to CEB because of alternate uh, interior angles. And this angle C up here is equal to it also because it's a isosceles triangle. This angle M then has to be double uh, angle C, which means it's also double this little angle over here, ABD. But because CBM is an isosceles triangle, this angle C B C angle C B M is also double this little angle. So this is double, this is one of them. In other words, it's been trisected. So if you can find this point E so that when you draw E to B, D E is double the length of C B. E D that is is double the length of C B. If that happens, the angle will be trisected. And if it doesn't happen, it's not trisected. So the big question becomes, how do we find this point? Well, that ends up being impossible with a compass and a straight edge. However, if I draw, if I have a tool for drawing a conchoid of Nicomedes, and the pole is the vertex here, and the directrix is the this side opposite the angle, and this PQ is going to be the distance. If I make, if I have a tool that makes this, and I make that distance two times BC, then where it intersects, where the concord intersects this horizontal line, will be what I need, and the angle uh, will be trisected. So that's a cool use of uh, of trisecting the angle. And of course, this is all very abstract, and you might say, well, students aren't going to care about this, they don't even care about bisecting the angle. But I think one of our goals, and one of my goals as a math teacher, is to try to get kids excited about, you know, this kind of math, just this, this, this riddle. It's like if you're teaching music, you want them to know how to play the piano or whatever, but if you could get them to feel the music and, and, be, and be touched by it and, and to play with feeling and to understand it, it's, uh, I think it's, it's, there's a value in that, and that's what I'm uh, encouraging you to do here. Now it turns out that a conchoid of Nicomedes can also be used in this picture. Um, this, this rectangle is a two by one rectangle, and there's a lot of angle bisects, there's a lot of midpoints and things here, but ultimately we need, if we have a conchoid drawer, and we draw it here, and we get the intersection, that point there, uh, I don't need my concord anymore. And I draw, I connect some dots, and some more dots. I will have accomplished doubling the cube now, because as you can see, this EA over AB is, is equal to the square root, a cube root of two. So the concord can be used for two of the three problems. The next curve, which is one of my favorites, is the spiral of Archimedes. Spiral of Archimedes is what happens when a, when a point on a line moves steadily on the radius, goes from the center to the edge of the circle, at the same time as the uh, radius rotates around. And it makes this awesome shape that was studied a lot by Archimedes. <coughs> the, um, the equation for it is very nice in, in, in polar form, R equals theta. The spiral of Archimedes is very useful because one thing you can do is trisect an angle. Here's my angle I want to trisect. I, I stick a conchoid, not a conchoid, a spiral of Archimedes, and I see where it intersects the angle. Then I trisect this line segment, which I can do with a compass and straight edge, and I get this point. I make a circle through that point, and where it intersects the spiral, I connect that, and that will 
trisect the angle, and you can think about why that works. The line segment is always equivalent to the angle. A lot of these things I do kind of fast because you have the video and you can pause it and think about it. But these are the most accessible things I found. Uh, the spiral is also, if you have a spiral, you're able to uh, square the circle. There's also something called rectify the circle. That's when you get a line segment that's equal to the circumference of a circle. So here's a spiral. Of course, we don't have a tool for drawing a perfect spiral, but if we did, and we have the ability to get a tangent line to the spiral, what Archimedes noticed is that if I take the point of tangency connected to the center and then make a right angle, I get this triangle. And he proved that this leg of this triangle has the same length as the arc of this circle. So if I move my angle, if I, if I move the point to, to this point on the spiral, I find out that this line segment is the same length as this arc, but that arc is one four, it's half of the circle, which is half of the big circle, so this arc, this line segment is one fourth of the circle. And once you have a line that's circumference, uh, that's length is equal to a circumference, you could also square the circle. So spiral Archimedes is useful for two out of three um, of, of, of the problems.